afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our session. And today we'll be talking about OPM, OPMP, Scaling Open Telemetry with Flexibility. So over the next 30 minutes, we will explore how OPMP plays a crucial role in managing observability agents efficiently, even as your system scale and evolve. Let's introduce ourselves. My name is Herbert. I am senior DevOps engineer at Crombank Indonesia. And then my colleagues. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Susni Alhamdani. I'm a CNCF ambassador and senior SRE. Today is our agenda, our open telemetry overview, and then our use cases, and then challenges in managing open telemetry at scale, and then OPMP overview, solution, and last is a summary. So we will start from the open telemetry overview. Hand it over to Husni. Yeah, just to give uh, context first about the open telemetry. So the open telemetry is an open source observability framework for instrumenting, gathering, generating, and collecting and exporting the telemetry data, such as traces, metrics, and logs. For example, I think you all are already familiar with all with these three observability pillars, like the metrics, logs, and traces. And then, for example, in traces, it works by collecting information from different part of the application and system, and then putting it together to show how the requests move through the system. And then, metrics is the represent data, for example, to get the metrics from the system like CPU and memory, or maybe even some any other critical data from, from the business case. And then there is logs to represent the process of generating events in the apps. And then the next one is why open telemetry. So here are some, some point why we um, have to use open telemetry in our telemetry process. For example, the end-to-end -end observability, like it's a technique that help us to identify all the root cause, like the latency errors, errors and performance issues by combining the data from logs, traces, and metrics. And then it's support for multiple languages. And then it's also support for auto-instrumentations, one of the key features from the open telemetry because we don't have to choose any line of code in our application and automatically open telemetry able to uh, export the data. And then it's also support variety of backends because open telemetry collectors or open telemetry component able to export into different telemetry backend. And we also want to give the overview of the open telemetry components. So these two are the build up component that um, build up the open telemetry, like the language specific API and SDK, like the instrumentation, whether it's manual or whether it's automatic. And there is another component that it's called collector to, to do the telemetry pipeline process. And then for example, in the auto in instrumentation support, like currently it's support for auto instrumenting for Nginx, .NET, Go programming language, Java, Node.js, and Python, because it's able to hook into the application framework and libraries, and then it's able to collect and export into telemetry data and to be sent into the telemetry backend. Because it can reduce the overhead and complexity because we don't have to change any line in our applications. And then the next one is to give some overview how we do the telemetry process in traditional approach, like logs, traces, and metrics is individually sent into, directly into the telemetry backend. And we cannot have the context of in the informations because for example, logs cannot be connected into the traces data or maybe traces into the metrics format because it's individually directly sent into the telemetry backend. And then there's no way to transform the data because it's only source and the destinations. Like there's no intermediate layer to be able to do some filtering, exclusion, or maybe any other advanced transformations. And this is how it's look like if we do with the open telemetry components. Like there is intermediate layer that it's called as open telemetry collector because 
it can improve the correlation within the data like log and traces. And then we also can improve or enhance the observability data because we can configure the sampling rate to reduce the cost. And we also able to extra uh, or adding some information in the metadata. And then since there is intermediate layer in between source and destinations, we can easily change to a new backend or into different destinations. And we don't have to, we, we don't have to change in the source or even in the destinations. And then the next point is the export the data into different formats. So open telemetry collectors allow us to receive data into various format and then we can convert them uh, into the desired destination format. And this is how it's look on the open telemetry collector process. Like there are three uh, pipeline or there are three um, process here, like the first one is the receiver and the next one is the processor and the next, the last point here is the exporter. So the receiver where we uh, get the uh, telemetry data and then processor to, to do some filtering, to do some transformation or maybe to do some um, removing unwanted data and so on. And then exporter is where we have or we can choose into desired telemetry backend. And then just to give an example, this is how we do in traditional approach. Like we are running in service mesh environment, like we instrument on the apps, but we also instrument in the service mesh side. But the problem here is, for example, we have another observability tooling like Prometheus, and Prometheus is within every or every three seconds is hitting our applications. And as an example, in the Jager UI or in the Jager traces, there is like user agent Prometheus. That's something we don't want to provide to the user view. And we cannot remove that kind of data because we don't have a way to remove that unwanted data. And then to solve that, so that's why the open telemetry component that we call or that we serve in the previous slide, there is open telemetry collector. So we have the intermediate layer. So let's say the telemetry backend is unreachable. The open telemetry collector able to retry to when the when the open when the telemetry backend backend is up. And then something we can do here is to drop the unwanted traces, and then to do some transformation like filtering, exclusion, on, and so on. But also we can merge the data from the application itself and also to merge the traces data from the service mesh because we have to instrument in the apps and in the service mesh. Like in Istio, there is extra containers that we call as an envoy. So hotel collector will merge from that to source and then send only to one backend, which is the Jager. And here is um, some implementation example in metrics and traces. So in our case, we have multi-tenancy needs or we have to host our customer into multi-tenancy setup. So we will have n numbers of open telemetry instance, depend on how many numbers tenant we, we want to onboard in our system. So customer A or customer B will have dedicated, dedicated open telemetry collector instance. And then if we do with this um, design, like the open telemetry collectors will grow depends on um, customer we want to onboard into the system. And this is an example on implementing open telemetry collector in traces. And then to implement open telemetry in metrics, like if we use Prometheus, and if we use the Prometheus operator, there is a Prometheus instance, and then there is Prometheus custom resource like port monitor, service monitor. And the problem is the Prometheus is by design is not built for uh, storing data for uh, long term, and then there is scalability issues if we only use the Prometheus. And how we implement open telemetry in metrics is actually to reuse the existing custom resource from Prometheus by connecting them directly into open telemetry collector by using the target allocator concept in uh, open telemetry component. And then actually the other point we want to share here that open, tele open telemetry collector is not replacing the actual 
um, telemetry backend. So it's not replacing the, the the component of Prometheus because Open Telemetry Collector will need to send the actual data to the the next um, destination. For example, Cortex or Thanos that has ability to store for uh, long long term data. And then in this example, we use open telemetry for metrics, we use open telemetry for traces, and then we use open telemetry for multi-tenancy. And then we have to manage the the open telemetry in large scale because it depends on uh, how many tenant we want to onboard into our uh, system. So we have to ensure that our telemetry collection system to ensure the availability, to ensure the flexibility, and then to ensure the scalability. And then for the next slide, or how we address these issues, I, I will give it to Herbert to, uh, to talk about the next slide. Thank you, Husni. So what is OPMP? OPMP is also known as uh, Open Engine Management Protocol, uh, network protocol for remote management of large fleets of data collection agents. So this protocol is a uh, vendor agnostic, so the server can remotely monitor and manage a fleet in different agents that implement OPM, including a fleet uh, of mixed agents from the different vendors. So this OPMP supports the following functionality. The first one is the uh, remote configurations, agent information, agent telemetry, and upgrade and or downgrade of the agents, and the last one is certificate rotations. Now let's discuss a powerful feature that further enhances the flexibility of open telemetry within large-scale environments, that's a uh, remote configurations. In any large-scale deployments of the open telemetry collector agents, managing configurations manually can become a daunting task. This is where remote configuration comes into play. With remote configurations, we can enable centralized control over the configuration of multiple hotel collector agents, no matter where they are deployed. This means that any changes or updates needed for data collection, processing, or export can be made from the central locations. Imagine having to tweak a sampling rate. Update an exporter endpoint or modify pipeline settings traditionally. In this way, this change would require logging into the each individual agents, making the necessary adjustment and then restarting the agents. And with the remote configuration, this modification can be rolled out remotely to ensure the consistency. Let's turn our attention to the concept of agent information. In large scale observability setups, keeping track of the status health and configuration of numerous open telemetry collector agents can be challenging. This is where the agent information feature becomes invaluable. Agent information provides a centralized view of all of your open telemetry collector agents. It's allow you to monitor their current state, track their configurations, health status, version, and hostname it runs on. The centralized control is not just about oversight. It enables proactive management. For instance, if you detect an agent is running on outdated configuration or downtime and or like uh, experiencing performance issues, you can quickly intervene that. Let's dive deeper into how this ties into the overall architecture of OPM. The next is agent telemetry. This is where OPM comes into play. The OPM allows agents dynamically adjust their telemetry reporting based on the operational needs, ensuring that the right data is collected to the right time without overwhelming the system of the backend. In the context of the OPM, the agent telemetry involves the automatic collection of the various metrics of open telemetry collectors, including CPU usage, it's like uh, understanding how much processing power the agents consumes, RAM usage to monitoring the memory footprint, and the last is the data processing rate to measure the rate of which agent process incoming data, which is crucial for understanding throughput and efficiency. These metrics are then reported to the OTLP compatible backend, which can be used for real-time monitoring, alerting, and performance analysis. Another critical aspect of managing a large-scale observability infrastructure is the ability to keep our open telemetry collector agents up to date. 
This brings us the topic of upgrading and downgrading of the agents. In dynamic environments, the need to update agents, whether the security patches, performance improvement, or feature enhancements is constant. With OPM, this process is streamlined through the secure auto-updating capabilities to ensure that your agents are always running to the latest version by updating according to your needs. Finally, let's discuss the critical aspect of maintaining a secure, scalable, open telemetry infrastructure. The connection between the open server agent and open, ser and open telemetry collector server is secured by TLS. As your open telemetry deployment scales, ensuring the security of data in transit become paramount, this is where TLS plays a crucial role, encrypting data to prevent unauthorized access. However, managing TLS certificates across a distributed network of open telemetry collector agents can be challenging, especially when it comes to certificate revocation and rotations. So this is our example of configuration OPM capabilities that just I explained previously. So all of the configuration can be set by yourself according to your needs. So there is a reports hold, a reports on metric, and reports remote config, and you can just disable it by change the value to false. The next is communication model. Currently, we set up implementation of OPM with two kinds of approach. In our instance or VM, we are using supervisor. So OPM clients connect to the OPM server on behalf of the open telemetry agents or agents. Typically, a single server accepts a connection from many clients. That's why the agents are identified by unique instance identifiers. Let's call it the instance UID. So the instance UID is recorded to each message to send from the agent via client to the server and the reversal from the server to the agent. And the second one is our in our Kubernetes, we are using OPM bridge. Same concept like a supervisor. However, the OPM has ability and permission to list all of your open telemetry collectors installed on your Kubernetes clusters. Example, we have multi-tenancy case. For each namespace, we have a dedicated instrumentation and dedicated open telemetry collectors. The main microservice, let's say payment microservices, hosted in customer namespaces. So for the instrumentation and open telemetry collector, both hosted in separate namespace of tenant namespace. And then we will set to configure OPM bridge and call to OPM server, which hosted in any environment that can be Kubernetes or VM or instance. Here's the example OPM server that help you can list all agents connected to itself. For each hotel collector will be signed with a unique instance ID. So all of your open telemetry collector and your Kubernetes, for example, uh, will be displayed on the server of OPM. So what's next? After we done configuration of hotel collector and all of the lifecycle managed by OPM with all of those capabilities that we have covered before, we need some additional action to support the flexibility and scalability of open telemetry collector. The open telemetry core distribution. So we want to share some insight about open telemetry core distribution or the default distributions. We can use a core distribution by itself uh, to bare bones and uh, to help us to suit an organization needs. So that will not be really so overkill when you deploy it into the production environment. We likely won't need to every single receiver, processor, exporter, connector, and extensions. So we just really have to choose the things that we really need to our environment. So is there a way to choose and build your components according to your needs? So, so this uh, OCB, or you can call it the Open Telemetry Custom Builder. So this is the example of Open Telemetry Custom Builder. In the left side, uh, you can see the Builder Config YAMLs. So this is the distribute. You can set the name and description and the output path. And then you can set the exporter as you need. For this case, uh, we just need the Depot Exporter and OTLP Exporter. And then for the processors, it's just only batch processors. And the receivers is only OTLP receivers.
and we just execute this command. Uh, the OCB is just uh, is uh, official uh, binary by the open telemetry. So the comparison with, between the default or core open telemetry collector agents, uh, we have the 255 megabytes. With our custom builder that uh, we choose so uh, really fit to our organization, it's only take 23.8 megabytes. So this is really small. It's like a monster car with the buggy cars. We can see the custom is only 6.6 .6 seconds to compare to the core hotels. Next, I will let Husni to continue this presentation. Yeah, for the next one, um, we also want to share how we use Kyverno in supporting the scalability on uh, scaling open telemetry with flexibility. So Kyverno is basically Kubernetes poli policy engine. So basically, um, usually it's primarily to enforce uh, best practices in Kubernetes. For example, if there is object that not following some pattern or not following, following our policy, the Kyverno can immediately reject for that object creations. But other than, other than that, Kyverno can also able to dynamically generate resource from an event or from any other object. So in um, supporting the open telemetry scalability, we use Kyverno for, for example, the automatic auto collector creation for each tenant. We also use Kyverno for automatic instrumentation creation. And we also use Kyverno for automatic network policy uh, restriction for uh, avoiding data breach uh, within the open telemetry collector instance. So just an example uh, on how Kyverno policy looks like. So in Kyverno, there is like match sections. So we trigger the open telemetry collector creations if we uh, have a namespace with tenant equal to true. Then it will trigger this Kyverno policy. Then it will generate the action from the Kyverno, which is to spin up the open telemetry collector that we uh, deployed using the open telemetry operator. So it's watching for every namespace creation with label tenant equal to true, then it will generate the open telemetry collector for each tenant. So in this diagram, like tenant X, tenant Y, and so on. That's the first uh, sample policy on using Kyverno policy to support the open telemetry creations. And then the next one, it's quite similar with the previous one. So we use the Kyverno policy to automatically instrument on that specific namespace. So there is namespace with label, for example, instrumented equal to true. Then, um, like the previous one, it will generate some object, so which is the instrumentation object from open telemetry um, concept. So tenant X, tenant Y, it has dedicated namespace. And on each namespace, Kyverno will automatically instrument that. It can be multiple microservices, maybe in Go, Python, and so on. The instrumentation can be done only using a single object that handled by Kyverno dynamically at a runtime. And to summarize our talk for today, um, the main idea of this talk is to uh, discuss and any other uh, related topic on uh, scaling open telemetry with flexibility, and it's using the OPAMP. And the first one is the only goal we want to have is to have the centralized control with the simplified management, like we can do the remote uh, configuration centrally to all the agents. And then we also want to have the automated scaling, like we want to ease all the process or all the life cycles to manage the open telemetry collectors. So that's why the OPAMP we use here to uh, handle those life cycles and the management. And then the next point is uh, the dynamic capabilities. Like we can enable, adjust, disable, or maybe we can um, edit some configuration on the fly and then we can uh, have that everything in single, in single control on the uh, OPAMP uh, server. And I think that's all that we want to share. We want to share for today. Thank you.
if there is question maybe Mm -hmm. You mean to um, handle the um, large of data sending to the open telemetry? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when it's, uh, the, the, the lock is quite big. Mm -hmm. um, actually, we not really use the locks in the open telemetry since we only use the traces and metrics uh, for, for now. But maybe Herbert have under opinion. Okay, uh, I will answer your questions. Uh, this is from the uh, my experience. So, like, uh, if you want to handle like uh, maybe 500 gigabytes logs data, uh, as you can see in the pictures, um, can I see? Oh, so yeah, okay, all right. Uh, wait, wait, wait. <coughs> uh, in this uh, customer A, uh, you can separate the between the hotel collector A and instrumentation in the separate namespace. So you can set the instrumentation uh, specifically to the deployments of the, your uh, microservices that have a, a big, uh, I mean, like a many logs. For example, let's say it's not a payment, maybe a login account or maybe yeah, accounts microservices. So you can uh, provisioning uh, the new in instrumentations and then set the name to the deployments of uh, accounts, microservices, and then you can set the new open telemetry collector in the your customer A. Let's assume that your name is a customer A. So you have uh, two open telemetry collector, it's okay, but the new open telemetry collector, you can set the resource between uh, the resource and the limits. So this open telemetry collector have specific instrumentation, this specific instrumentation is assigned to the specific microservices. So uh, if your deployments of uh, account microservices uh, send like a uh, totally uh, really big data to be processed, so when the open telemetry collector downtime, uh, it's only affected to the your only specific deployments. It will not uh, affect it to other deployments in your namespace. That's why, but you only play to the resource limit of your auto uh, collectors between maximum. And yeah, of course, yeah, you have to use the sampling rate in the processor to reduce the cost and CPU usage. Thank you. Next one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you please uh, be more specific? Like, so, um, in the lab, uh, we have a application mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to the data to the hotel center. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, then we can control we have a communication. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, actually, the OPAMP server is designed to manage the open telemetry collector. Um, as far I as far I know, it's not directly uh, controlling the instrumentation, but it's able to, for example, we instrument Python and then we send it to specific open telemetry collector. We can, uh, for example, reduce the sampling rate, so we can do that via OPAMP server. So we don't have to change um, specifically or directly to the instrumentation, but we uh, control that in the open telemetry collector. But depends on how, as a, on what things you want to change in the instrumentation. Yeah.
Yeah, I think it's almost uh, within a seconds, like three to five seconds. Like um, we apply the chains on the centrally via the OPAMP server. But since the open telemetry collector, for example, using the OPAM bridge, it will send the configuration via the OPAM bridge and then it, it will send all the data into the open telemetry uh, collector operator. So the operator will populate those data. So it's almost within a few seconds, it will immediately um, reflect. So they are communicating uh, in WebSocket? Yeah, the, the OPAMP to the agents is using web, WebSockets. Any other questions, maybe? No, I think we also almost um, um, reached the time limit, which is uh, 4.10. And thanks again, everyone, for joining our session.